poštovane dame i gospoda. Dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear members of the press, we haven't seen each other for the last three months. Uh, welcome to the presentation of the May Inflation Report. As usual, we will give an overview of the current monetary and macroeconomic developments and our expectations for this and the next year. First of all, I would like to highlight that since the beginning of 2017, inflation has moved within the bounds of the new lower target tolerance band. The target tolerance band equals 3 plus minus 1.5%. We anticipated that inflation would move within the target tolerance band this year and announced this trend at presentations of the inflation report last year as well as at the previous February presentation. As in other countries, inflation in this period was affected by the recovery in global oil prices in the second half of 2016 as was expected. However, adverse weather conditions early this year resulted in a higher than expected increase in prices of fruit, vegetables and firewood. That this is an impact of one-off factors on inflation is suggested by low and relatively stable core inflation, which equals uh, around 2% year on year. According to our latest projection, over the two-year horizon covered by the projection, we expect inflation to move within the bounds of the target tolerance band of 3 plus minus 1.5 percent. You will hear more detailed elaboration on the projection of inflation and its factors later on in the conference. I would uh, now like to take a look at developments in the international environment, which for quite a while have posed a challenge to Serbia, as well as to all small and open economies, which is why it is very important that we preserve macroeconomic stability and improve our business ambience. In the prior period, the international environment was marked by uncertainty. Uncertainty regarding the pace of global recovery, uncertainty regarding the character of monetary policy of the leading central banks, and uncertainty in terms of movements in prices of primary commodities, notably oil. The uncertainty in, in the international financial market originates primarily from the diverging monetary policies pursued by the Fed and the European Central Bank. Assessing uh, the, the, the U.S. economy, the Fed continued to raise its Fed funds rate in 2017. By contrast, the European Central Bank's decision to extend the quantitative easing program at least until the end of 2017 will mitigate the negative effects of the Fed's monetary policy normalization. These decisions affect not only the economies, but also global markets and capital flows to emerging economies, which in turn inevitably affects the pace of Serbia's trade growth and financial cooperation with the rest of the world. The recovery in the global market of primary commodities is largely attributable to the favorable to more favorable outlook for global economic growth, which is gaining speed and showing signs of sustainability, whereas volatile prices of these commodities are under the impact of specific factors, from weather conditions through compliance with agreements of oil producers to geopolitical tensions. It appears that the uncertainty on this account will persist in the period ahead. However, the results we achieve and anticipate when it comes to the narrowing in internal and external imbalances and implementation of structural reforms will determine the extent to which this uncertainty will reflect on us. Therefore, I would like to particularly emphasize that owing to reduced macroeconomic imbalances, Serbia is now much more resilient to potential adverse impacts from the international environment. Lower fiscal deficit and stronger external position are our response to external shocks. Thanks to consolidation, the fiscal deficit was reduced uh, to 
1.3% of GDP in 2016, while positive movements continue into the current year. I wish to remind that in the first quarter, the general government recorded a surplus of 1.2% of GDP, and the share of public debt in GDP was reduced further. At the same time, the current account deficit was reduced further in 2016 to 4% of GDP and was fully covered by foreign direct investment, which is likely to continue in the coming period. This contributes to strengthening the country's external position, thereby increasing our resilience to external shocks. The National Bank of Serbia's contribution to foster and sustainable economic growth and an increase in employment will continue through price stability and relative stability of the exchange rate which, with lower costs of private sector financing. A key fact regarding economic growth is that the current account deficit was reduced owing to outstanding export results of the Serbian economy which was also facilitated by the activation of earlier investment and the recovery of external demand. Also, greater product and geographical diversification of exports reduces the dependence on developments in individual markets and makes Serbia's exports and economic growth sustainable. The sustainability of growth is also confirmed by positive financial results of the economy over the past two years, which the National Bank of Serbia supported by ensuring price stability and relative stability of the exchange rate with lower costs of private sector financing. Such results, coupled with further improvement in the business and investment ambience and continued structural reforms, create conditions conducive to faster economic growth. This year, we expect GDP growth to step up to around 3% and then further up to 3.5% the next year, supported by continued favorable movements in the labor market. I wish to uh, elaborate uh, particularly on a reduction in interest expenses and negative exchange differences as factors of the economy's success. In the written speech which you will uh, receive as soon as I end uh, my presentation, you will be able to use the data that are presented in my speech so as to remove uh, any, eliminate any possible dilemmas. Uh, namely, based on data of the Business Registers Agency, and these data are available on the website of the Business Registers Agency, in 2016, the financial result of our economy improved by over 360 billion dinars compared to 2014. In the same period, as a result of monetary policy easing by the National Bank of Serbia, a reduction in the country risk premium, uh, which is the result uh, of more favorable macroeconomic performances of our economy, and monetary accommodation by the European Central Bank, and uh, I, um, I uh, wish to emphasize that uh, these factors uh, have been presented uh, by order of importance. Uh, so European Central Bank comes in the last place, uh, namely interest expenses declined from 145 billion dinars in 2014 to 99.3 billion dinars in 2016. This actually means that the corporate sector paid to creditors 45.8 billion dinars less in 2016 than in 2014. At the same time, owing to the stability of the dinar, which is the result of successful implementation of macroeconomic policies and 
uh, does the National Bank of Serbia's policy as well. So there is also the policy of uh, the government of the Republic of Serbia, namely the negative exchange rate difference is felt by uh, 157.6 billion dinars from 246.3 billion dinars in 2014 to 88.8 .8 billion dinars in 2016. In total, in respect of both these factors, the income statement of the corporate sector improved by 203.4 billion dinars in 2016 relative to 2014. So uh, I'm making comparisons. Uh, so these are uh, data that are available uh, because when it comes to 2013, um, there are data on the website of the Business Registers Agency. Actually, there are no uh, such data on the website of the agency for 2013. So these are comparable data, and uh, we have precisely calculated the effects uh, of our measures. Uh, given that the corporate sector has interest-bearing receivables and that it calculates positive exchange rate differences on FX receivables, the effect of savings in these two items on the, profit, on the profitability of the corporate sector equals 148.4 billion dinars in this period. This uh, is uh, the explanation of the story behind the relatively stable exchange rate, uh, lower interest rates, and the uh, performance uh, of uh, macroeconomic policies in Serbia. This makes us set satisfied, not only because of the volume of savings, but primarily because of the fact that this opens room for the corporate sector to engage in its regular business activities and to plan its development in, in more predictable circumstances. Of course, we are satisfied also because this confirms the soundness of the National Bank of Serbia's policy, and this also gives us an incentive to continue with its implementation. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, Serbia's improved macroeconomic outlook and the results achieved in terms of the narrowing in internal imbalances, including the implementation of structural reforms, have for quite some time been positively assessed by international financial institutions and rating agencies. Let me remind you that recently, that is in March, Moody's raised Serbia's credit rating. During the assessment, the agency took into account all of the results achieved in terms of reducing imbalances and achieving macroeconomic stabilization, as well as the results of implementation of the dinarization strategy and the resolution of non-performing loans. The risk premium, which since the start of the year has fallen in Serbia more than in the neighboring countries touching its 10-year low, also reflects the growing confidence in the Serbian economy. In addition, the projections of key macroeconomic indicators for Serbia prepared by relevant institutions run close to our forecasts. They also says that inflation will move within the target tolerance band both this and next year and expect further acceleration of GDP growth similar to our projections. Uh, some of these projections are even uh, more optimistic than ours, such as the European Commission's uh, forecasts. All the above factors indicate that our economy is now much more capable to respond to challenges, which is an additional incentive for us to preserve the stability we have ensured and to continue with structural reforms and improvements in the investment ambience. Of course, you may, you may rest assured that the National Bank of Serbia will continue to closely monitor and assess the developments and tendencies in the domestic market and the international environment. As so far, we will continue to apply all available, all available instruments in order to maintain low and stable inflation in the medium run, which combined with the preservation of financial stability will contribute to economic growth on a sustainable graph. Uh, Dragica, now you may uh, hand out the presentation. I'd like to thank you for your, for your attention. And now I would like to give the floor to Ms. Anna Ivkovic, General Manager of the Directorate for Economic Research and Developments, and uh, she will give an overview of our medium-term inflation projection. Thank you, Mr. Governor. 
Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed members of the press, fellow economists, welcome to the presentation of the May Inflation Report. As usual, we'll present key information from the report, most notably information about current economic trends, new macroeconomic projections and monetary policy decisions. Consistent with our expectations, inflation has been moving within the target tolerance band of 3 plus minus 1.5 percent since early 2017. As in other economies and in line with our expectations, inflation movements in this period were determined by the impact of primary commodity prices, while fruit and vegetable prices recorded an unexpectedly robust rise. Thus, the impact of the recovery of global oil prices on inflation growth was consistent with earlier projections and expectations. On the other hand, a stronger than expected impact came from the rise in prices of fruit, vegetables and solid fuels, which was higher than usual for the season due to cold weather in January and February. Given that these are one-off price hikes, our inflation projection was adjusted for this year only and is somewhat higher than the February projection, but remains almost unchanged for the next year. We expect inflation to move within the target tolerance band until the end of the projection horizon, that is in the upper half of the corridor this year, which you can see in the graph, and around the 3% target thereafter until the end of the projection horizon, that is March 2019. That inflation movements in early 2017 are mainly due to one of factors is signaled also by low and relatively stable core inflation, which hovers at around 2% year on year. Cold weather early in this year reflected on economic and foreign trade activity as well. However, as over 80% of manufacturing which is mainly export-oriented, continued to provide a positive impulse to growth, whereas exports considered considerably increased considerably in March over 1.3 billion euros, and that the global growth outlook was improved, we did not change our projection of GDP growth and the balance of payments current account for this and the following year as pointed out by the governor. As in February, we expect economic growth to accelerate to around 3% this year and around 3.5% next year. Positive tendencies are expected to continue in foreign trade as well. The current account deficit is anticipated at around 4% of GDP this year and will be fully covered by foreign direct investment. Furthermore, owing to the results of fiscal consolidation, the three-year objectives for the fiscal deficit and the public debt to GDP ratio were achieved in 2016, one year ahead of schedule. Positive trends continued into the first quarter of 2017 with a consolidated budget surplus of 11.8 billion dinars, that is 1.2% of gross GDP, and a reduction in public debt by 274 million euros. The international environment was marked by positive macroeconomic developments and prospects for somewhat faster global economic growth. In the euro area, our most important foreign trade partner, the economic growth projection was revised upwards. Economic growth is expected to be dispersed both by sector and country. Faster growth in the euro area should also positively affect the countries in the region, which are also our important foreign trade partners and thus Serbia's economic growth as well. After hitting their Regarding oil prices in the period behind, after hitting their lowest in January 2016, global oil prices rallied in the second half of the year. Since early 2017, they have moved between 48 to 56 dollars per barrel. Based on the latest available futures, oil prices will stand at around 50 dollars per barrel this and the next year. This is close to their current level and lower than we assumed in the February projection. In addition to oil, prices of other primary commodities increased as well, notably of base metals and primary agricultural commodities. Due to adverse weather conditions, which affected the production of main agricultural crops, world food prices increased early this year as well, but entered a decline in March as the conditions improved. An exception are world meat prices, particularly in the European Union. 
The rising prices of oil and other primary commodities in the global market were the key drivers of global inflation growth since early 2017. Euro area inflation came close to the target, supported by rising prices of energy and food. However, still relatively low demand in the majority of countries, including the Euro area and the countries of our region, hinders a more substantial rise in prices, as confirmed by core inflation trending below the multi-annual average. That is why the central banks of these countries still pursue accommodative monetary policies. On the other hand, following December, the Fed raised its Fed funds rate in March again. The pace of rate hikes in the coming period, in combination with future moves of the European Central Bank, will largely determine movements in the international financial market. As the majority of countries in the region, as pointed out in, by the governor, Serbia adapted pretty well to the Fed's rate hike so far. This is also indicated by the country's risk premium, which fell by uh, 91 percentage points from early 2017 to uh, 158 basis points in mid-May, mid its 10-year low. In addition to global factors and higher yields on benchmark U.S. treasuries, the fall in Serbia's risk premium was also aided by improved macroeconomic fundamentals, as confirmed by the Moody's upgrade of Serbia's credit rating in March. Depreciation pressure from the start of the, this year waned in time. In April, the dinar strengthened against the euro. Movements in the ethic market early in the year were largely influenced by further normalization of Fed's monetary policy, which affected the behavior of foreign investors in the domestic market and the seasonally higher FX demand of domestic energy importers. Working in the opposite direction were inflows from exports, foreign direct investment and exchange transactions, as well as a rise in FX index bank assets. Relative stability of the exchange rate was also supported by the National Bank of Serbia's interventions aimed at easing excessive short-term volatility. In the first quarter, the National Bank intervened on the sales side. Since April, it has been intervening on the purchase side. Past monetary policy easing by the National Bank of Serbia, low interest rates in the euro area, narrowing of internal and external imbalances, increased interbank competition, as well as acceleration of, ex of economic activity, all contributed to growth in lending, which speeded up to 4.3% year-on-year in March. In addition, as banks intensified their efforts to resolve the issue of non-performing loans as of the beginning of 2016, the share of non-performing loans in total loans dropped to its lowest level in seven years, 16.8% in March. Compared to August 2015, when the NPL resolution strategy was adopted, the NPL share fell by 5.4 percentage points, which means that strategy yields pretty good results. According to the preliminary estimate of the Serbian Statistical Office, GDP increased by 1% year-on-year in Q1, and we estimate that it rose by 0.2% from the previous year. Manufacturing continued to provide a positive contribution, recording growth in over 80% of primarily export-oriented areas, owing to investment in the past period and the recovery of external and domestic demand. Domestic demand also had a positive impact on growth in the majority of service sectors. On the other hand, construction, agriculture and energy contributed negatively, mostly due to negative effects of cold weather early in the year. On the expenditure side, a positive contribution to quarterly GDP growth came from household consumption and inventories, while net exports were a negative contributor because imports, primarily those of energy, grew faster than exports aggravated by cold weather. Given that the negative effect of cold weather was temporary, that manufacturing continued to record high growth rates, and the growth prospects in the euro area improved, we kept our projection of economic growth unchanged for this and for the following year. We expect the GDP growth will accelerate to around 3% in 2017 and around 3.5% in 2018. This year, growth should be investment and export driven with an increasing contribution of household consumption, while the next year, 
domestic demand is expected to have the leading role. Investment and further improvement of the business ambience, coupled with a faster recovery of external demand, should support further growth of industry and construction, while the continued recovery of final consumption should contribute to the growth of service sectors. On the other hand, we expect, as we did in February, that this year's agricultural output will reach the 10 years average. This implies its negative contribution to GDP growth because of the above average agricultural output last year. Since the last year, as we pointed out in the introduction, inflation has moved within the target tolerance band, equaling 4% year-on-year in April. As expected, inflation movements early in the year were determined by the recovery of global oil prices, which began in the second half of 2016. Expectedly, due to the low base from the last year, this price was one of the generators of inflation movements globally. On the other hand, the increase in fruit, vegetable and firewood prices caused by adverse weather conditions early in this year and the rise in fresh meat prices in April were higher than seasonally expected. These effects are estimated to be one-off in nature, that this is the case, that is that inflation movements since the start of the year were largely determined by one-off factors, is also suggested by a stable movement of core inflation at around 2% year-on-year. According to our central projection, year on year inflation will continue to move within the target tolerance band of 3 plus minus 1.5 percentage points in the next two years, that is by the end of the projection horizon, meaning March 2019. We expect that inflation movements in the coming period will be determined by several key factors. A more inflationary impact should originate from the recovery of inflation in the international environment and an increase of aggregate demand, which has been supported by our monetary policy for quite a while now. On the other hand, the high base in prices of petroleum products and fruits and vegetables is likely to slow down inflation until the first quarter of the next year. Our latest inflation projection for 2017 is somewhat higher than in February, while the projection for 2018 is almost unchanged. Compared to February, we assumed a higher increase in prices of agricultural commodities in the global and domestic markets and slightly higher euro area inflation. However, the deviation from the initial inflation projection for this year is mainly the result of the growth in prices of fruit, vegetables and solid fuels early this year, which turned out faster than seasonally expected, as these one-off price hikes increases will be dropping out from the annual comparison in the beginning of 2018, we expect inflation to decrease and to continue to move around the targeted 3% until the end of the projection horizon, March 2019. The risks to the projected inflation path, as you can see on the graph, are symmetric and are mainly associated with movements in the world commodity and financial markets and, to some extent, also to the rise in administrative price to the rise in administered prices and the performance of the agricultural season. Taking into account the projection inflation movements, the new inflation target and the expected effects of the monetary policy easing implemented thus far, the executive board kept the key policy rate unchanged from 4% set in July. Factors that mandated caution in the conduct of monetary policy were uncertainties in the international financial and commodity markets, primarily with regard to the pace of normalization of the Fed's monetary policy and movements in primary commodity prices. Risks from the international environment were mitigated by better macroeconomic prospects at home, supported by the implementation of fiscal consolidation and structural reforms, full coordination of monetary and fiscal policies, the narrowing of external imbalances and, to a degree, the European Central Bank's monetary accommodation. In the coming period, the NBS will continue to carefully monitor and assess movements in the domestic and international markets and use all the available instruments to make sure inflation remains low and stable over the medium term. Esteemed media representatives, dear colleagues, the main inflation report contains three text boxes covering topical issues. The first text box provides a detailed analysis of the impact of extremely cold weather early this year on inflation, and the second examines its impact on economic and foreign trade activity. The third box elaborates on the importance of the international environment for economic growth in Serbia and other emerging economies. Thank you for your attention. We are here for all your questions. Uh, 
Marko Subotic, Al Jazeera, a question for the governor. Is it uh, now uh, more clear for you uh, what happened with Diners Club? Um, how was it uh, possible that they made uh, such great losses? And uh, will the NBS uh, perhaps uh, consider the Slovenians uh, example which uh, stopped uh, uh, the issue of diners' cards because Slovenia had a similar situation? And uh, you also spoke, uh, 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 you also said the following. Uh, you were uh, talking about uh, Fiat exports, and uh, now we are five years into the production of uh, cars in Serbia. Do you have any fears that uh, perhaps uh, the sales will uh, decline, um, uh, given that uh, the sales are actually declining? And uh, does this affect, uh, to what extent does this affect uh, uh, the economic situation? And uh, how much would uh, the new vehicle to be produced in Kraukovic mean uh, for the Serbian economy? Milan Trajkovic uh, will say a few words about uh, Fiat, and I will tell you a few words about Fiat. Uh, so on the website of the National Bank of Serbia, and uh, generally uh, the National Bank of Serbia is very open to all questions uh, of the media, uh, regardless of whether they're motivated uh, by the wish to inform the public, and uh, we somehow try to respond jointly uh, so as not to disturb uh, the public uh, by presenting uh, uh, non proven facts and uh, by talking about uh, the things uh, that. Uh, uh, should be solved in a quiet manner, so to say. What should be uh, said about diners uh, has been said uh, by the National Bank of Serbia. Uh, so they have uh, been operating uh, since 1992, and uh, the operations uh, have been uh, uh, in the zone, in, uh, in somehow unregulated. This has been a vacuum, so to say. They're not uh, uh, subject uh, to our oversight. Uh, uh, they were established and they operated in accordance with the law on companies. And in 2012, when I came to the National Bank of Serbia, we stepped up uh, the story about uh, um, the story about the law on payment institutions, uh, and uh, we also had a public discussion. This lasted until 2014. In 2014, we also adopted the law. Uh, the law came into effect in 2015, and this institution uh, filed a, a request, uh, submitted an application. And at this moment, I can only say that uh, there are no longer any uh, doubts. This is uh, forged uh, documentation that was uh, submitted uh, at the time of the registration uh, for the payment institution and uh, what is also even uh, uh, more important uh, is that the buyer who was uh, for uh, who was performing due diligence uh, for two years and before the purchase uh, he wasn't able to see uh, to detect uh, that the documents were falsified and this actually uh, means that uh, with the new owner and uh, all the responsible authorities uh, we are working with them in a responsible uh, and uh, in a responsible manner and uh, we are working uh, silently and uh, we ask uh, uh, um, the public to be uh, patient. Uh, we don't want to damage anyone and uh, uh, the reputation of uh, this house, uh, which is undisputable as the Diners uh, Club International, so the reputation should not be brought into the question and there should be uh, no speculations uh, when it comes to resolving uh, this issue, uh, not even um, uh, not even uh, the situation similar to that that happened in Slovenia. Uh, I have to tell you that uh, the National Bank of Serbia will do its best, uh, that uh, those who believe that there are perfect uh, plunders, perfect uh, thefts, uh, we will actually demonstrate that there is no perfect plunder, uh, perfect theft. And uh, I also uh, uh, ask for the support, uh, uh, namely judicial authorities should help us uh, to put an end uh, to uh, the, uh, the, the compromising of the financial industry, of final accounts, and uh, uh, we do not wish to compromise any longer all the professions uh, that are involved uh, in this uh, in, in, in this story. And when it comes to the um, statute of limitations of cases and so on, we wish to prevent all these uh, possible consequences, and we wish to find uh, the real culprits. And uh, we are working uh, very seriously and responsibly, and we are in constant uh, communication with the current owner, and we expect everyone in the chain who were helping uh, this thing happen. We want them to be uh, persecuted uh, before courts, and we wish them, uh, we want uh, all, all of them to be punished as they deserved. 
And Milan uh, will tell you something about exports. When it comes to fiat, we have been emphasizing uh, this for many times, and uh, we also had a special text uh, box in one of the previous inflation reports. I believe it is the August inflation report. Uh, what is indisputable here is that uh, fiat exports have been declining uh, since 2013. Another indisputable fact is that uh, the total automobile exports have been rising uh, uh, by year. And uh, uh, owing to other small companies in the sector itself. So we are not talking about four or five companies talking directly for Fiat. We are talking about uh, 35 or 40 companies that are there and uh, that are not directly linked to Fiat, uh, but Fiat was uh, the initial impulse for them to come to Serbia. Uh, so these exports have been rising uh, each year uh, when it comes to Fiat. Uh, so this year uh, we expect uh, a neutral effect uh, uh, from Fiat uh, on GDP growth and uh, on the improvement of the current account deficit. But we expect that the overall automobile industry will continue to grow this year as well because we're seeing new investments in this field as well. As for the new model, the effect would certainly be uh, favorable as, uh, uh, as uh, when it comes to the magnitude of this effect. This would uh, depend on the model, on the export price and on the import uh, component uh, as well. That is the share of import component in the overall production. Milana Brajković, RTS. Uh, let's stick to the courts that you discussed. Now I'm talking about the costs of uh, uh, loan processing. The High Court in Sombard uh, issued, uh, in second instance, the decision that the bank must return to the client the, uh, the, this money paid for uh, loan uh, processing, uh, increased by increased. It would be good that when the court issues a decision, this becomes a truth, a fact. Now we're facing a decision where the court made a decision in this concrete case and from some other sides we received information that is from the National Bank of Serbia which says that the law has not been violated. So I would like uh, to uh, hear the explanation what citizens should do, what this means. We will continue uh, this uh, practice and the only possible course of action of not commenting on court decisions. In this and in uh, every previous case the explanation of what bank may define as a, uh, as a cost commission um, cost of loan processing has been explained in many, many uh, responses to media and citizens' uh, questions, and I don't have anything more to add. I can only repeat that in using any kind of bank service, city or from any institution, the bank should carefully read the conditions of use of that particular service and to ask all the necessary questions on time in order to avoid any problems in the future. The National Bank of Serbia is one of the most transparent central banks, not only in the region, but uh, on a wider scale, uh, because on our website you can have comparable data on all costs. In the total bank Bank, um, banking operations for the whole banking industry, and this is the first year in a row when, where the citizens may use as a source of information our website, apart from what they already heard at the bank. They should ask all questions at the bank as well in order to avoid any unpleasant surprises in future. So, do you see anything problematic in this whole uh, situation with the cost of processing the loan. Uh, this is lawful on the bank side because according to law, bank may charge for this kind of service if they uh, inform the citizens duly about this and if it's uh, made uh, put in the contract. I will withhold from commenting one uh, experience of the National Bank of Serbia and one of the courts in Serbia which issued a decision, that is the judgment decision, in a procedure which even did not take place, was not even conducted. In some later time, when all the, uh, all the guilty uh, parties are punished, I will 
issue a statement and say which people were involved and what was this case all, all about. Uh, this one case, which was a bad experience that we had, does not mean that the court should not, uh, that the courts do not uh, make proper judgments. On, for, on the contrary, uh, the majority of cases, majority of judges are very well acquainted with uh, this uh, subject, but I also don't want to see the banking sector discredited because of some individual case and to judge about the uh, whole banking industry on one uh, case. National Bank of Serbia wants to also add to transparency and protection of all consumers uh, in 2011. We adopted the law on consumer protection and this is also our job. We are not the arbiter that should tell to courts what to do, but I think that all of us should comply with the law. But now we see some, uh, some instructions to citizens that all of them should sue the courts, all the citizens that took the loans in the last 10 years. When you say there are instructions uh, received or issued to citizens, I'll return to uh, one way of saying uh, that some glass was broken. The glass cannot be broken by itself. Somebody put the glass at the uh, edge of the table. Uh, somebody invites citizens to do that. And I would like to plead for responsibility of all these stakeholders who have invited citizens to sue banks, I would say that they are spending somebody else's time, somebody else's money. Uh, so I think that every citizen, it's his own decision to make a, a judgment, uh, make a decision to take a loan, and every citizen must make his own decision. I would not now give any statement about some collective judgments and collective decisions. Uh, this is, uh, we live in a time where many organizations are seeking a room to promote themselves. Whom are they helping? Uh, the lawyers and courts. At the moment when all of us are advocating for mediation, out of court settlements, uh, some talk, uh, argument talk, I don't think that this is the way to use resources and to uh, waste somebody's confidence. Nevena Marcic Tanyuk, I have a question uh, relating uh, to amendments uh, to the law on the uh, deposit insurance agency. Uh, so what was uh, uh, the rationale uh, behind these amendments? Uh, did they have uh, negative effects uh, from the investment of these FX uh, funds in uh, government securities, in securities of other governments uh, because of negative interest rates? Uh, because uh, the ECB yesterday announced that at its uh, next meeting it will consider the issue uh, of ending that is uh, uh, of ending the quantitative easing uh, program uh, in agreement with the Ministry of Finance and upon the initiative of the Deposit Insurance Agency, uh, which is obliged uh, to take care about the assets of the fund. Uh, so these are primarily FX assets. Uh, we supported uh, the initiative uh, to uh, have these FX uh, assets uh, that the agency has in its fund uh, be invested that they may be invested in FX debt instruments in the country, that is in uh, government securities uh, denominated in euros, and not only in uh, debt FX uh, securities of other uh, governments and uh, foreign banks, uh, in the circumstances uh, while uh, we have uh, negative interest rates in place. I see that yesterday there were some misunderstandings uh, that uh, this is uh, investment in Dina Repo of the National Bank of Serbia. This is not the case, uh, namely uh, the National Bank of Serbia is uh, uh, an alternative to investment in FX uh, debt uh, securities of the National Bank of Serbia and uh, also the National Bank of Serbia, although it has, it, it has this possibility so far, it has never issued uh, uh, an FX debt security. On the other hand, the Deposit Insurance Agency, through its internal uh, documents, uh, is obliged to have a particular FX uh, uh, structure, currency structure of its assets. Uh, so far, it hasn't used this structure, namely now, 
it uh, uh, can sell FX and uh, uh, get dinars and invest the dinars in repo at the central bank. This has not been the case so far, and in future this will not be the case either. And we support uh, this initiative, uh, which was launched uh, in agreement with us. Uh, so a part of the assets of the deposit insurance agency should be invested in uh, government um, uh, FX securities because the positive return and the obligation of the deposit insurance agency. So the deposit insurance agency has the obligation to have a return, and this will be enabled uh, through uh, such an arrangement. Uh, of course, the National Bank of Serbia is obliged uh, to keep uh, a part of FX reserves with AAA first-class banks. And we have uh, some negative effects of uh, holding our FX reserves, uh, but you cannot uh, change the nature of such funds that are FX reserves uh, only because uh, there are some negative effects at a particular moment. Uh, so this is the risk that uh, we uh, all face, all of us uh, face who deal with activities uh, that depend actually on market circumstances. Uh, if we uh, may uh, elaborate on the following, the Minister of Finance said yesterday that uh, the deposit insurance agency will invest primarily in repo securities of the central bank and partially in government securities as well. Uh, so just for the sake of uh, uh, clarity, so what are these uh, securities? What securities that you have in which they can invest? And uh, also I will have another two questions right later on. Uh, so the minister probably uh, made a mistake when he said that. Uh, so you should have read uh, the proposal of the law. Uh, so the law says that the possibility uh, for the agency to uh, invest in uh, debt FX uh, uh, securities so of, of the government. The central bank has no debt uh, security. And I said that the possibility of investing in dinar securities, our one-week repo, has existed so far. This possibility has not been used and will not be used in the future because the internal procedures and the internal acts of the deposit insurance agency oblige the agency to have an FX uh, structure. To have a, uh, if he mentioned uh, repo uh, dinar uh, securities of the central bank, uh, so this was uh, an uh, unintentional mistake. Uh, uh, so soon you will have the meeting uh, with the IMF. That is, the review is uh, is um, coming soon. So what do you expect uh, in terms of possible obstacles on this uh, path? Uh, uh, um, despite successful uh, fiscal consolidation, what about the structural reforms? And uh, could you say also something about the exposure of our banks to Agricor and uh, whether you expect uh, uh, from the new president to uh, propose you for a new mandate. So where shall I start from? Uh, so let me start from the easiest question, the last one. Uh, whenever uh, somebody asks me, uh, even uh, when joking, uh, uh, whenever somebody asks me such a question, I say, so who would uh, uh, take the function uh, th that I'm discharging right now? Uh, the job, the function of the governor is something that I consider extremely important. Uh, and I believe that with, that with my my team since the 7th of August 2012 uh, until the uh, present day and uh, I usually say that this is the fifth year of my first mandate uh, meaning that uh, I have no pretensions to any functions apart from the current one and uh, and uh, I will uh, be uh, highly devoted to discharging uh, this function as long as circumstances uh, require uh, for me to do so and the procedure of election is well known to everyone. Uh, so I do not expect uh, this, and nobody asked me this, nor would I uh, like uh, to be asked, uh, because uh, I've been doing uh, for the whole life the things that I know to do. So I was uh, for a long time in politics, but I was always an economist uh, in politics. Uh, so uh, don't take a miss a small joke. Uh, in 2012, uh, when I returned uh, from Copernic, and when I was a guest, uh, at the TV show of Danica Vucinic, she asked me for my opinion and uh, she asked uh, what I thought about a particular issue as the vice president of the Serbian uh, Progressive Party. And I said I wasn't able to uh, somehow 
segregate to, to make a differentiation between the opinion of the vice gov of the vice president and uh, of, uh, of of a person of a human being of a mother and so on. Meaning that when you when you are a human uh, uh, being, uh, uh, you cannot uh, make any distinctions uh, between other functions. Being a mother is a gift uh, that was not uh, felt uh, by everyone, but this actually implies extreme responsibility when you take decisions in life. And um, when Mr. Hochevar said uh, this world uh, um, will be able to survive without women, but it will not be able to survive uh, without uh, uh, mothers. Uh, being an economist uh, means that you need to have a professional honor and ethics, uh, and uh, you have to stand by each of your decisions. Um, uh, the function that you are dis discharging at a particular moment means that uh, everybody who is doing a particular job uh, will uh, uh, will stop discharging a particular function after a while. Uh, but of course, uh, later on, uh, if uh, if you want uh, to uh, have uh, an honourable duration, and uh, if you had if you have the reputation that you want to upgrade and uh, to preserve as an honourable mother, uh, you have to uh, weigh your decision uh, very carefully. And uh, many people were not happy about the order of things that I presented, uh, but for me, such order of things uh, is an is, is an integrity of things. You have to integrate uh, the values that are a constant of duration uh, for you. And uh, I, I perhaps gave uh, um, an elaborate uh, explanation. So how will Agricor uh, influence uh, our uh, GDP? Uh, through the banking sector. I'm always interested in the final result. Uh, so I always say that I'm not uh, looking at a particular part of a picture. So when I present the results of the National Bank of Serbia, I always say that the government is also there and that fiscal consolidation was uh, indispensable for our results. Um, so today, uh, we, uh, so the seven-year security on Wednesday, on Wednesday had such a great performance uh, at the auction and uh, 18 billion. Uh, so non-residents actually invested um, 18 billion uh, in uh, such a security. So I can't say that this exchange rate and this stability is only uh, my result. Uh, so this is the result of the government of the Republic of Serbia and uh, of the people who are leading uh, uh, our country in a responsible way. When it comes to Agricor, uh, so we, we were not surprised uh, at the National Bank of Serbia. Uh, so uh, we have a financial stability uh, departments, uh, bank uh, supervision departments, and we were observing uh, these related uh, parties, and we have taken uh, all necessary steps uh, to uh, prevent uh, the banking sector to suffer, uh, or the suppliers, or the citizens as well. So uh, our measures are not talked about. Uh, but uh, the results of our measures uh, in terms of stability of the banking sector and uh, of all entities uh, that are in the agri-course uh, circle, this is visible in reality, actually. And what was the third question? I'm happy. I'm happy about the arrival of the IMF, uh, particularly uh, because I will be personal. Uh, namely, uh, we have the new members uh, of the IMF team uh, uh, now, and they have the background uh, from the European Central Bank uh, so far. Um, uh, we have never had uh, such a high-quality technical mission as the one that was just ended, and uh, this um, uh, mission uh, dealt with the uh, dinerization, and uh, the mission was led uh, by a Frenchman, a wonderful gentleman, who worked at ECB, and now we are arranging uh, the next mission. And uh, in the same way, uh, the members of our team have uh, uh, presented in an excellent way, and uh, I had a pleasant duty to be asked uh, to think about uh, uh, joining uh, some of representatives of the IMF, uh, join uh, IMF teams uh, to implement missions in other countries. Uh, this is not so easy, but we as the people who are uh, working uh, uh, on the same job, and uh, we are somehow joined uh, by success, and we resolve all dilemmas uh, at meetings uh, uh, within the national 
National Bank of Serbia, and I uh, like very much uh, such uh, approach to work of the IMF. But the harder part of the work is uh, on the uh, the harder part of the work is on the government of the Republic of Serbia, especially when it comes to structural reforms. And you also know that uh, there are many things that mi when mi Mr. Lifton actually helped us uh, to get uh, this arrangement. He said the inheritance in those enterprises uh, in terms of those problems uh, that were uh, somehow concealed uh, for a long time and uh, these problems have been um, uh, put on the table before this uh, central bank uh, unprivatized the companies and so on. So uh, there are also those uh, who believe that they can survive uh, by virtue of the importance of their very profession while not operating in a profitable way. So all these are problems that the government is facing and they will have a, a partner on our side. We will help them and uh, we are doing our job properly and I see no special problems in this regard. And uh, the IMF uh, uh, does not surprise us uh, so often, uh, which doesn't mean that they will not surprise us. Who knows? Uh, because life is unpredictable. So we do expect them around the 20th of June. In the next month, maybe even on 20th of June, uh, we should also get a new prime minister. What do you expect from the new governor and the new prime minister? You will regularly attend the government sessions. And what do you think will happen in the period ahead? To be honest, I actually am not so happy because the government will get a new prime minister. I'll be very open and frank with you. I'll use this uh, opportunity uh, to uh, talk about the uh, uh, EPS uh, uh, contribution to GDP, to uh, cold weather conditions impact, uh, to illustrate why I'm not happy, because Alexander Vucic will not discharge this duty for much longer. Uh, whether anyone in this country should uh, care more about uh, electrical uh, power company of Serbia, uh, should, uh, who is, should uh, be the most worried about this company, uh, which is very important for the, uh, for the overall development of Serbia. But it seems that everybody else cares about your children than you as a parent. And then you wo wonder what motivates this uh, care. The one who contributes to the results so that I may present to you today that in net amount, 148.4 billion dinars of savings were made through decreased uh, exchange rate differences and uh, lower cost paid to third parties. And this was the savings made by this economy and may invest it in their own development. This, we couldn't have done that if there wasn't for this man so dedicated for this task. If the National Bank of Serbia during this time was able to be not only autonomous in making its decisions and in uh, choosing instruments to achieve these results, but uh, we were uh, totally independent, but at all times we were consulted when the overall financial account was at stake. Uh, I frankly am afraid that uh, at the Prime Minister's post we may have somebody who will be to that extent uh, informed about the budget of the Republic of Serbia and who will be, will be able to be such a responsible person and uh, so uh, uh, such a person that will be uh, cherish every dinner that was paid from the government's budget, from the Republic budget. I really think think that there is a great uh, burden to be inherited by any successor of Alexander Vucic because it will be very high to attain, hard to attain that uh, type of dedication, uh, uh, responsibility, uh, uh, and to ensure long-term sustainability of all measures, uh, to, um, to also address even the most unpleasant issues without seeking any excuses. I think it will be very difficult for any 
successor of our Prime Minister. And this is not the fear of myself only. Uh, all of us in the National Bank of Serbia wonder will we be able to cooperate uh, so successfully with the successor of the Prime Minister. Because our, the risk to our job do not issue from some other areas. Everything that's faced uh, worldwide are also our concerns, uh, oil prices, uh, primary commodities, etc. But the very big risk is fiscal risk, risk arising from the fiscal sector, and there's no other person that can judge this risk so competently as this person. When you ask somebody what does a newly employed person, professor, means uh, in, the, uh, in the technical faculties in order to promote IT industry, I attend the government sessions and ask anybody else sitting here. Nobody can tell you and calculate within three minutes what does mean for the budget, not only in this year, but uh, in the next, in the following three years, in the medium term, what are these health impact and what should be taken into account? I don't know. You are not optimistic. No, I am an optimist, but I'm just worrying. When you have such a good cooperation with somebody, that somebody does his job in the most responsible manner, taking care about the uh, whole country, whole economy, uh, now I see in new papers today, uh, they wonder whether this 10% will jeopardize the budget. And is there any person caring more about our budget, IMF or somebody else, from this person who was together with his team, but as a leader of his team, who achieved these results? That's why I'm worrying. I do worry. What, what else can I say? We haven't seen each other in a long while, but if you have no more questions, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>